The year is 2024, so that means it's time for another video game adaptation, Fallout. We're currently living in the age of the video game adaptation. So it's time to head for the wasteland where men have sex with chickens and Nuka-Cola is the nectar of the gods. I've spent the last 12 hours binging the holy hell out of the Fallout series so I could do a review for you. Now this review is spoiler free, but make sure to subscribe because a spoiler heavy review is also incoming. So with that being said, some of you might be asking, did I enjoy the Fallout series? And the answer is yes, but it's kind of complicated. You see, some people are raving about the show and saying it's the best video game adaptation. Well, for some, that might be true. For me, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag because there are really good highs of this story, but in my opinion, there's also some really deep lows. So essentially, the way you have to look at this series is it's a show that's not made for fans, but fans will like it, but also some fans will hate it, and it's really just a mixed bag. Personally, I think anyone can enjoy this show, whether you're a Fallout hater, a Fallout lover, or somewhere in between, because they even admitted that it wasn't made purely just for fans, that it was made for casual fans to enjoy, and the way that they kind of approach this is by having four main storylines. Now, I won't spoil what those four storylines are, but each one of those has a distinctive feel, which I think will help grab some viewers, but also alienate others based upon what you like. One of the stories is very Bethesda Fallout. It's very over the top. They don't really care about lore. It will retcon itself. It doesn't care. It's meant to just play around in Americana and stupid, like the Wasteland is a playland. It's Nuka World personified. Some people really like that. Fallout 4 is their favorite game. They really love Fallout 3. Now, another one of the other storylines is very Jonathan Nolan. Like, I thought I was watching Westworld for a little bit. Like, it's that political, you know, corporation-driven, um, just with a Fallout flair. Another one of the storylines felt like classic Fallout, Fallout 1, 2 in New Vegas. It was very dark, yet could just pepper in the slightest comedy. That it just, it had the perfect blend of both. And one of the storylines I thought was the best had this. It didn't lean too far in either direction. It was just that perfect balance, all while combined with a mystery, and I thought it was really good. As for the fourth storyline, I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, there's a fourth storyline that intersects with all of the other storylines that sort of comes to a head. And to me, it is one of the worst parts of the show. I won't be spoiling what that is. You'll kind of notice all the storylines from the first couple episodes, like, you know, the threads that they're putting down for the viewer. But one of them, man, it was terrible. Like, I found myself checking my phone when certain characters or interactions were on the screen. And that's sad um, because the, the show overall manages to interweave so many different things and thematics and comedy and dark, gritty subject matter and all this different stuff. It tries to weave them all together. Yes, sometimes it falls on its face. It really does. You know, some of the comedy doesn't land. There are definitely moments where if you just approach the show with any sort of logic, a lot of things start to look really dumb. Now, I get it. It's, it's a show about ghoulified humans and mutant apocalypse and all of that. There's a suspension of belief that comes with that innately. I get that, right? I'm a Fallout fan. I know how whimsical and crazy and dark and gritty and fantastical the series can be. But there are still moments in this show that like where you have to throw out basic logic. Like you, you can't be thinking logically. You can't be thinking as a human, as a rational person. For example, there are times in the show where people get injured and they just keep on walking for episodes. Like, they're just, oh, cool, what's up? Let's drink some Nuka-Cola. How you doing, sugar bomb? And that happens multiple times throughout the series. There are other things where it's just like, if you actually think about what a character said or did, it would make no sense. But it's done to crack a joke or it's done to further the plot. It's just wild to me that in a show about ghoulified humans and power armor and Mr. Gutsies and all of these things, that there are still times where the show jumps the shark. And that's odd. If you just want a good time, 
Like you just don't wanna think, you just wanna work your ass off at work, get home, crack open a cold one, and watch a TV show with your spouse or significant other and have a, a couple laughs. Fallout, you're gonna love it. You are gonna absolutely love this show. You know, it has the same kind of tone as like The Boys, uh, Twisted Metal. It can kind of fit in those molds. If you're wanting like dark HBO, Last of Us style, you know, gritty realism, it's, it's not that. It's not that. It tries at some points to be that, but then you realize these people are wearing jumpsuits and computers strapped to their wrists and that's a walking zombie and, you know, it, it just doesn't do that well. It tries, and I think at some points in certain key moments it does it well, but there are other times it's just not that show. It's meant to it's meant to be lighter, funner. You can tell that's how the creators were sold the franchise. Despite having some actual critiques of the story and world building and all these different things, actually one of the bigger problems in my opinion of the show is the budget. So many points in this show felt cheap. Like it felt like, "Oh, this scene, you can really tell the budget's here." And in this other scene, it felt like the fan series Nuka Break. If you're not aware, there's like a fan series um, called Nuka Break and it had like zero budget, right? And But it had a lot of heart, which uh, that's why some Fallout fans really liked it. At points, this felt like Nuka Break. Not in like tone or spirit, but in budget, which is not a good thing for an Amazon original show. Uh, the best example I can give of this is there are aspects of the Fallout lore that are just completely ignored, like core elements of Fallout that are just not in the series. And to me, the only explanation is, uh, we didn't have the budget for that. We didn't have the special effects budget for that throughout an entire series. We're already having to do ghouls and power armor, all this stuff, like we can't afford that. And that's odd, right? I noticed definitely some points like, oh, they saved their budget for this scene. Um, I actually think that the show probably should have been shortened to six episodes because of that. You know, some of the plot lines were a little extended out. Some of the, the stuff felt redundant. I think if you would have shrunk it to six episodes, kept it tighter, right? And so you could have had more budget for each episode. You could have incorporated some of these more integral aspects of the lore, you know, of the world. Um, but I definitely felt the budget. There's just moments that felt really cheap. I think one of the reasons the show has such a low production budget is because most of that budget is taken to license so many of the great tracks featured throughout the series. It's one of the highlights of the season, if you ask me, is that every episode features multiple tracks that just blow your mind, that fit the world, and just sound so nice. And I thought the production, despite it having a limited budget, I thought the production design and all of the callbacks to the series was nice. I loved seeing sugar bombs and Nuka Cola and Vault Tech. And as a Fallout fan, after watching this show, I find it hard not to want to play the games, whether that's going back to the original Fallouts or playing something modern like 76 or Fallout 4, whatever your preference. It just, I thought they did a really good job of making it feel like Fallout. Despite, again, them saying, hey, it's not made for Fallout fans, it definitely felt like it was designed for Fallout fans. Now, there are some, you know, there are some issues, you know. There's a lot of people right now blowing up X, talking about retcons to certain things. I'll let you guys decide that, or you can watch my spoiler-filled video. Um, overall, if you're a Fallout fan, will you like this show? Really, the Fallout community is so divided that I feel like if you're an older Fallout fan, there's probably some that you'll like, probably some you'll absolutely despise. If you're a newer Fallout fan, like if you're a Bethesda Fallout fan, you love 76 and Fallout 4, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't love this show, right? Audience, I think, is going to love this as just a casual viewer. Like, if you love The Boys, or if you love some of these darker things, or you like, if you loved Twisted Metal on Peacock, you're going to love this. Uh, that's what I kept thinking, like, oh man, I can definitely see who this should be marketed to. Uh, because it's it's got crazy gore, it's got over-the-top comedy, it's got some nuanced characters, it's got alpha males, bruh. It's got them alpha ghouls. I, I, had, a, I had a lot of fun. If I had to give it a, a rating, if you're wanting a rating, you want a number rating, I'd give it an 8. Because I'm trying to balance myself as a Fallout fan 
also with me just trying to be objectively like, hey, this is just a, a TV show. Take your fandom out of it. You know, if you just want to judge it from like a critical standpoint, you could go eight or higher. I think if you can judge it from like a Fallout fan, for me, it's like eight or lower. So I'll just settle for an eight. I think what it does well, it does really well. And what it does bad, it does really bad. Again, I think if you look at the four main storylines, if you don't like any of the four, you're sure as hell not going to like the show. There's going to be some people, though, that like all four. I liked three for the most part. You know, two were really good. One I could stand and one I thought was trash. So that's my rating system. I'm about an eight or lower. You know, I do think people should watch it. If you're trying to abstain from the show morally or something like that, just watch the damn show, okay? I hate modern Bethesda just as much as the next guy. Look at my content. I've made a living off of just saying Bethesda sucks, but... You know, let's give Bethesda their flowers when they do do something correct. And I think the way that they approached this to try to make it appeal to fans, older fans, newer fans, casuals. Again, that's where I think the four storylines that interweave are actually good because there's something there for every type. Modern fans, older fans, newer fans, no fans, only fans. There's something there for everyone. And that, that, took, some, that took some skill. Like, that took some effort. So overall, I thought Bethesda, you know what? Good job. Good on you, Bethesda. Will it last? Probably not. Probably not. So if you're wanting a more in-depth, critical look that is spoiler-heavy, going detailed into plot lines and twists and turns and all of that, make sure to watch my follow-up video of this, a spoiler-heavy review. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you go watch Fallout, and have a good one.